Bum bitty 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 bum bum. Bum bitty 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 bum. That was my attempt to make things just seem a little eerie at the start of this video because uh, I think this could get interesting. Is is that a song that I should recognize? It's from uh, Eight Crazy Nights. You ever see the the cartoon Adam Sandler movie? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen that. Yeah, a lot a lot of musical set pieces in that one. And uh, yeah, bum bitty 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 bum. Anyways, Northwestern UConn uh, with a Sweet Sixteen trip on the line. UConn is the best team in college basketball. They are the defending champions, and they have a serial killer psychopathic head coach. They have an NBA center. They have uh, an All-American point guard. They have arguably the best transfer in the sport who used to play in the Big Ten. They have a uh, lottery pick freshman. They have a power forward that you have called the best stretch four in the sport. They're loaded. Northwestern has the best player on the floor in this game. They Whoa. Have- they have Darius Lamar Bowie Jr. And they got some other guys. They got some role players. But that if we're doing the preview, I just hit all the key points for UConn, and I just hit the key point for Northwestern. They have the best player on the floor. Let me start with this with UConn. If you're UConn, do you think this is a good draw for you, Northwestern in the second round? No. I think I, if I'm them, I would much rather want to see Florida Atlantic. I, I, you want to avoid Boo. Like, it's it, – it, this is what people don't realize. And I don't know when it's going to finally hit them or finally just uh, hit a, flip a switch inside their head. Boo is one of the baddest college basketball players that we've seen in a minute. This dude is an actual killer and he's in his and he's and he's comfortable. He's comfortable, Greg. Boo Booey in Barclays against the Number one overall seed that everyone expects them to lose. Like UConn's favored by I think like 14, 15 points in this game. Would it not be poetic for Boo to do the Boo Booey thing? And then you combine Boo Booey with the law off the law offices of Langborg and Barnheiser. Who knows? Never gonna stop laughing at that one. That's one of my favorites from you this year. Uh yeah, yep. So Okay, I feel like we're like detectives. Like, I feel like this is true detective season one. And uh, I mean, I'm obviously McConaughey. You're obviously Woody Harrelson. And here we are trying to tag team, figure out who did it. Who done done it? Did Dan Hurley kill or did Boo Booey kill? Because we got two killers right in front of us. And I don't know who's more likely to kill in this game. I, I know. I know for a fact that neither of them are backing down. They're gonna they're gonna go one one's gonna come out on the other side. Yeah. Only one. And it's gonna be a battle. Scary. It's a it's a scary proposition. Um all right. We we're gonna go to bat for Boo, obviously, because that's what we do. With that said, what is Northwestern gonna do with all of UConn's talent here? Like, this is a game you really need Nicholson, right? Yeah, okay. On the flip side of that, um, there is zero resistance at the rim or inside and Donovan Klingon is massive and good and he can dominate this basketball game. Um, you know, Unger and Preston just aren't right now cut up to be the starting, the starting center for these teams, to be honest with you. Like they're just, they're just, they're backup level players, but they're starting because of injury and they don't really provide much resistance. Honestly, one of the things I think that FAU did a bad job of, is getting the ball to big Vlad more. Cause I think Vlad could have just dominated that game. UConn won't make that mistake. UConn's going to feed Klingon. They know it. Hurley knows it. Everyone knows it. Tristan Newton knows it. They all know it. They're going to work that ball in the Klingon and he's going to finish everything at the rim. If he doesn't finish it, he's probably going to get it back and finish it again. The pad of stats. Like it, there's just really zero resistance at the rim. Um, you know, Also, the turnaround time of the game, you know, UConn is astronomically deeper than Northwestern is. So, like, Northwestern is just rolling with this guy, like, this rotation of six guys. Uh, You know, it's it's an uphill battle. Yeah, I am a little bit worried about uh, not fatigue, but just, like, damn mileage on these guys is a lot. Like, Barnheiser played 45 minutes. He didn't come off the floor against FAU. Boo played 43. Langborg played 41. Martinelli played 39. 
that's a lot asked of guys who are, I, I mean, look, they're durable. Give them credit because they've been doing this for a while now, but uh, they're, they're not the biggest stature. They're not the biggest athletic guys. Like all of a sudden you've played so much and now you look up and you have these NBA talents standing across from you. I think it is a scary proposition. How many guys on Northwestern would play rotation minutes every single game for UConn? But outside of Boo, obviously Boo would. Do they have anybody else that would actually play for this team? I, I think Brooks would. He wouldn't start, would he? No, I'm no starters. Okay, but Brooks would be like sixth man, do everything off the bench guy, and help them a lot. Uh, yeah, like yeah, would like, would would Lang, as much as we love Langborg and he killed FAU, would Langborg play on this team? I I really don't know. It's kind of tough so. to envision, right? Like, yeah, like I don't know where. So is the is the only path for Northwestern in this game just a Boo masterpiece? Yes, and that still might not be enough. What do they need from Boo to feel comfortable that they're going to win the game? They need 30. That's it? <laughs> Are we sure they don't need more? Because I, I, I'm i expecting to get some from Langborg and Barnheiser as well. Got it. Okay. Um, like th- th- those three players need to combine for – at least what fifty five, yeah, sixty, <laughs> which could happen. It could happen. Um, looking through, UConn's lost three games this year. Uh, they lost to Kansas at Fog Allen, and that was just kind of like Tristan Newton was the whole offense. Nobody else did anything. Stephon Castle didn't play, so I'm willing to throw most of that game out the window. And it's Fog Allen; it's hard to play. They've only lost two games since then. Lose to Seton Hall. That's an eye opener. One, Kadari Richmond just superstar. Twenty three points, five assists, eight steals in that game. Like, okay, so a guard superstar in your way to beating UConn. Interesting. Then the Creighton game, they got blitzed. They got blown out in that game. Uh, everybody from Creighton was good. Ashworth had twenty. He led the way. He took thirteen threes. And then Alexander sixteen. Calk and Shireman both in double figures. To me, that represents the two paths of how Northwestern could hang in this game. Either they need Boo Booey to do the Kadari Richmond, be the no doubt best player on the floor and superstar them all the way there, or they need Boo to get his 20 plus six assists plus Barnheiser and Langborg and Martinelli are each in double figures too. And you're looking up like, wait a second, everybody showed up. If either of those happen, I think Northwestern can hang. If both happen, if you get a superstar boo performance plus the other three guys all in double figures, then I think suddenly you look up and we're in the boo zone. For our UConn listeners who haven't watched this all year, do you want to explain what the boo zone is? And uh, do you think they'll be in the boo zone in this game? So to explain the boo zone without going way too in-depth to it, because honestly we could spend an hour or two uh, defining what it is, what it means to be there, how you get there. It's a very intricate system. But to keep it quite simple – no matter what's going on during the game, you could be up 20 in the first half. You could be down 20 in the first half. Northwestern just wants to get to the last four minutes of the game and to be within six points. That's it. Honestly, even single digits. That That's all we need. And that's when Boo Booey does the I got Booey on my back thing. I'm Boo Booey. I shoot 44% from three. They don't call me Boo Darius Lamar Booey for no reason. And he does the boo thing. And that's the boo zone. And not many have escaped the boo zone this year. It's a dangerous place to be. You don't want to be there. Ask the ask the other opponents. They didn't like it. Mm-hmm. So just whatever you do, just stay out of the boo zone. Just don't get don't get there if you're UConn. And to be clear, go through Northwestern's losses this year. They've only lost one game by double figures. So this is not like they lost 11 games, 10 of them by single figures, only one in blowout form. They lost to Illinois on January 2nd by 30 at Illinois. But that's what they do. They just grind it out. And even if they don't win, they want a close game late and they want to make it your star versus my star. Uh, I think they probably will have a chance. I've I've dropped this number a bunch this year and especially in the postseason. But Northwestern's top 10 in the country at playing up to their competition. They are the best high major team in the country at showing up when they play their best competition. They took Purdue to overtime in their loss at Mackey Arena, and then they beat Purdue in Evanston. 
Like <laughs> this, this team's good, man. This team shows up when they play the best teams on their schedule. And that would scare me a lot if I'm UConn, because if it is a close game late, it's going to become Tristan Newton versus Boo. And I don't think you like the answer when you look really at what the answer to that question is. Who are, who are the two best teams in the country not, right now, Greg? UConn and Houston. Who's who's the top three best teams in the country? <laughs> UConn, Houston, and Purdue. Boo Booey looked the be- one of the best teams in the country dead in their eyes and has done nothing but beat them the last couple of years. Like he he's he is the only player in the country that seems to have an answer for Purdue outside of Tobin Anderson. Like he's not going to be afraid of this moment whatsoever. He's not going to be afraid of Donovan Kling. He's not going to be afraid of Danny Hurley. Like he, he's, he's done that. Like he's taken, he's taken down Purdue. So I'll just, I'll, you know, I'll just fair warning. I get it. If I'm a UConn fan, I think I'm going to boat race these dudes, but at the same time, just, just let's, let's proceed with caution. Yeah. Especially, especially because last thing, Boo's got a chip. He came into that Florida Atlantic game, and everyone's like, John L. Davis, this American, like, John L. Davis is the best point guard. John L. Davis is going to make it very tough on Boo. John L. Davis bumped Boo at halftime. That also is going to carry on. That's bad for Tristan Newton. I pray to God Tristan Newton doesn't do, doesn't poke the Boo. Pray to God. I don't think Tristan will poke the Boo. I think Danny Hurley will. Don't poke the boo. I, I think there will be a moment in this game where Danny Hurley either says or does something demonstratively and it gets boo going. I just, I believe that firmly. Uh, where is boo from? He's from New York. Where's this game being played? Brooklyn. Yeah. Boo boo is two and one against the Zach Eady National Player of the Year era Purdue team. Two and one. He's won two out of three games. The loss came in overtime in Mackey. If you think for a second this is going to be a coast-to-coast easy one, you haven't watched enough Northwestern. You haven't watched enough Boo Uh The line is 14.5. Northwestern is plus 750 to win outright with our friends at MyBookie. Uh, and I want to make it clear before I give my prediction. UConn is the better team in this game. They are better at four out of five positions. They are deeper. They have the better head coach. They are the defending champs. They are the best team in college basketball without a question. All of that's true. They don't have the best player on the floor. It's the only thing they don't have in this game. We'll see how much it matters. Uh, My Bookie is the presenting sponsor of All Things Sleepers, Cart. My Bookie uh, has promo codes, offer boosts, uh, sign up boosts. We have a sign up boost. Promo code Sleepers. You can get a deposit match bonus up to $1,000. Everybody wants extra funds in March. The best way to get them with us with promo code sleepers at my bookie link in the description of this video. It's a great sports book. It's our favorite sports book, player props, odds, boosts, expert predictions, you name it. They have it all. Go take advantage of promo code sleepers up to $1,000 in a deposit match. Like I said, the line is 14 and a half. 14 and a half is what UConn is favored by. For the record, Ken Palm has UConn by 10. And, and the books have it 14 and a half. What's the play here? Uh, Northwestern 14 and a half. And also there will be a boo sprinkle. If you, if you, if you think that I'm not going to have some type of skin on Northwestern money line, Greg, I don't think you know me. 14 and a half is my favorite play of the first weekend. I can't believe they set the line at 14 and a half. I don't think anyone's watched Northwestern. All the advanced analytics point to Northwestern showing up for this game, playing up to their competition. All the metrics say Northwestern should only lose this game by 10. I don't get where this line's coming from at all. It has to be Northwestern's injury concerns. The injuries didn't kill them against FAU. Haven't killed them once in the last month. In fact, Northwestern's covered, I think, nine of their last 11 games through these injuries. So uh, they continue to be mispriced in the market. I don't get it. And I don't care. You could have made this plus 100 for Northwestern. You could make it plus 2,000. You could make it plus 750 where it's at. I have Northwestern winning this game. I have Budarius Lamar Bowie finally cementing his legacy in stone. And uh, they're going to be in the boo zone. And it ain't called the Tristan Newton zone. It ain't called the UConn zone. It's called the boo zone. This is his one moment, his one shining moment, his one chance to go out and be remembered forever. 
And uh, I liked what I saw from the supporting cast against Florida Atlantic. I like where this team is at right now. And most importantly, nobody sees it coming. Like, I I really think UConn thinks this is going to be a cakewalk. Greg, you seen that Spider-Man meme where, like, the, not the one with the pointing, but the one where it's like Peter Parker, his – his Spider-Man soup's all ripped up and like they're like people are carrying him out and they're like, careful, he's a hero. Mm-hmm. Guy, our guy, sleepers guy, go ahead and fire up that graphic and put Boo Booey's face on there. Yep. That's how they're going to be carrying him out of Barclays when he beats UConn. Careful, he's a hero. You heard it here first. Northwestern money line, Northwestern to win. Good luck, UConn. Good luck, Northwestern. Please do this for us, boo. Just give us this one gift. Uh, We'll be back to recap it once we're done. We're doing previews and recaps for every game of the NCAA tournament. Thank you for watching. Click subscribe. Make sure you can see them all.